Hi, I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World, and in this, this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble all of the pieces for the Melville block. This is one of the blocks in the Lovable Mutts applique pattern. So a couple of things I wanna point out really quickly before we get started is this is the video where I'm showing you how to do this using a light box to position the pieces, but I have used the same pieces in a second video showing you how to do this without a light box. So if you don't have a light box, you'll wanna scooch over and watch that other video. But one thing to point out is if you're not using a light box, you need to transfer all of these dotted lines that are on the back of the pattern onto the front pattern to use as a placement guide. And since I've used these same pieces for both uh, both methods, you're gonna see those dotted lines transferred over onto the front for here, but you can ignore them for our purposes with one exception, and that is the mouth. So all of these other dotted lines are showing you where additional applique pieces overlap here and where those are going to be placed. The mouth, there is no over, there's no applique piece for the mouth, but we are going to stitch directly on that line. So I've transferred it to the front. I've just used a regular Sharpie permanent fine tip marker. It's okay that it's permanent and that it's black because you're gonna stitch over this with black thread. So if a little bit of the marker line shows through between your stitches, that's totally fine. It's just gonna be black on black and nobody is ever gonna see it. So of all of the lines that I've transferred over to the fabric side of these pieces, the only ones you would need to worry about is the mouth. And that's the same case for all of the other dogs in the pattern. The mouth and a, one or two of them have eyebrows also. So anything that's a line that you're going to stitch on, you would wanna do that transfer and you can just set it down on your light box and you'll be able to see the line right through it and just trace right over it with your pen. And you'll see me do that in some of the other light box videos, but uh, this is the only one that I'm talking you through everything. So the numbers on the pattern, I've got this all set up, my light box all set up and ready to go. So I'll peel the layers back. So we've got the light box on and I've got the brightness turned up as bright as it'll go. Then I've got my placement guide that has all the numbers on it. Those tell you the order in which you're gonna lay the pieces down. And then I have a silicone mat that is going to hold all of the pieces uh, together and then I'm gonna iron them together right on this mat. So we're gonna start with piece number one which is his neck. Now, if you're doing this, this I'm sure the way I'm demonstrating this to you is with uh, what I call snapshot style. So I'm going to crop this on the block so that his neck is going off the bottom edge of the block. So it'll look like you've just snapped a quick photo. Um, if you want to do this, what I call emoji style, which is really just the face centered in the middle of the block, you would just leave that neck piece off. But I'm gonna, there for the sample that I'm doing, I'm doing it snapshot style. So that is piece number one. Number two is one of his ears. And you just line it up so that the edges all conform to those lines. Three is the second ear. Then four is the top part of his head. There we go. And then I'm gonna give him some eyes. So this is number five. And if you have trouble seeing the numbers, once you start getting fabric laid on there, the fabric just tends to sit a little bit up off of the surface of it, but once you push it down so that it's actually making contact, you'll be able to see the numbers right through there. I do them nice and big so that you can see them easily. And then seven, he has a little stripe down the center of his forehead. There we go. And then eight is his muzzle or snout. And then nine is his great big kissable nose. All right, so now I am going to carefully lift the silicone mat off of the light board and I'm going to take this over to my ironing board and then I'm going to fuse all of this into place right on the silicone mat 
let it cool and then peel it off and then the, that whole face acts like a single iron-on transfer and then I will transfer it to the fabric to the block that I want to use, the background block, fuse it down again, then do all of the outline stitching and then I will bring it back here and show you the finished block. All right, here is the finished block all done. I've done all of the outline stitching around it and I also added some catch lights to his eyes. I use just a simple, shiny, uh, three-dimensional fabric paint for that. I like the Scribbles brand. Um, and I've got a tutorial showing you how to do that and the pattern has a link to that if you want to see that. So I thought I would show you this finished dog, but also show you the, the Lovable Mutts pattern has 14 dogs in it. So this is just one of them that I used as the demo. And I used this one because he's pretty typical. He's got um, normal kind of ears. He's got the addition of this center stripe. He's got some stitching that you have to just stitch right over the lines. It's not all applique pieces. And that kind of, with this single block, that covers all of the different things that you may run into in any of the other blocks in the pattern. So here are the rest of the blocks. Uh, this one is Ed and his he's the only pattern in the block, he's the only block in the pattern that you cannot do emoji style. So all of the other dogs have the head, you can easily just take the neck piece out and just have a floating head in the middle of the block, which is a more graphic style. I call this snapshot style and the other emoji style. And Ed is the only one that doesn't have a separate head. All of the rest of ones, the, all of the rest of the blocks in the pattern do. So a very simple yellow one. This one doesn't even have a muzzle piece. So this is a really good one to start with when you're just getting started. This one has a simple muzzle, no mouth. So no, uh, just trace over the line stitching. This is the only one that I added eyebrows to and I kind of wish now that I had used a lighter fabric for his face so that those eyebrows would show up more. But that does show you that if you don't like just stitching over the lines like that for definition, you could easily just leave the eyebrows off if you wanted to. This one I like, he just looks like a grumpy old man dog to me. Uh, this is another pretty standard one, shoulders, head, ears, muzzle, nose, and a line for the mouth. And on all of these, I should point out, I didn't design this to be a straight up mix and match pattern the way that the Playful Puppies and the More Playful Puppies pa patterns are, but you could very easily take this face and shoulders and put these ears on it and use this muzzle instead. So you've got a lot of possibilities. If 14 dogs aren't enough for you in the pattern, you could definitely create some new combinations just by swapping out ears and muzzles. You could also put different heads on different bodies. So some of the bodies are wider and some of the bodies are more skinny. So that would be another way that you could get some different looks in. This one has the addition of an eye, an, a spot on his eye, and I did that in a different, um, a different fabric. So all of these fabrics, I should point out, are from my blenders collections that are available on Spoonflower. I call this print spilled cereal, and this one is called almost gingham. It's very much like a gingham, but the spacing is more irregular. Um, so this is just showing you what it looks like if you bring in one other color. So I should also mention on all of these, I've created a collection on Spoonflower to make it easier for you to shop that has all of these spilled cereal prints, all of the almost gingham prints, and the background that I used. All of these background blocks are from the Farmer's Market light color palette. So here's another totally different kind of ear and this is a dog that has a little contrasting belly most of them don't have that but that's also something that you could easily take off of this and add to a different dog so you could give this guy a lighter belly patch so you definitely have room to play around with the pattern so here's another one that is more wolf-like i think this is the first one we've seen that has pointed ears more like a german shepherd He's got a very, very wide body, so that would be a fun one to play around with. 
So this guy has got the skinniest neck of all of the dogs. So you could give somebody else that skinny neck. And I love this guy. Just this color is called blueberry and I just really, really love that shade of blue. And one more, oh, I love this guy. So another different ear shape, different head shape, another pretty skinny body shape, but all of those pieces you could mix and match with the other ones and really have fun and play around with them. So that is how you put together the dogs in the Lovable Mutts applique quilt pattern. And I hope you have fun with it. I'm Wendy from Shiny Happy World. I'll see you next time.